forgetting we're not in Kansas anymore. I'm walking here! I'm walking here! You read too many comic books. Well, some people just got faith that it's sticking in your mind. Live from the Kodak Theater at Hollywood and Highland in Los Angeles, California. The Buddy Shots Podcast Awards. Everybody. This is Mike from the Bloody Shots Podcast, and I'm so happy to be here tonight. Now, this week, we're actually going to be talking about End of Days. This is a film that was directed by Peter Hyams, who also directed a couple films we've already seen and talked about on the podcast, Outland and The Relic. <sighs> Wait a minute. Hyams. I've heard that name somewhere before. Wait a minute. His son, John Hyams directed Universal Soldier Day of Reckoning. And you know, I reckon that movie wasn't very good. Am I right? <laughs> oh, come on, that was a nice one. I'm out of here, I'm... Uh oh! <laughs> Wow! Wow! Matt just slapped the shit out of me. Keep John Hyams' name out your <laughs> mouth. <laughs> wow, dude. Yes! It was a universal soldier joke. Keep John Hyams' name out your <laughs> mouth. I'm going to. Okay. Well, that was the greatest night in the history of podcasting. Thumbs up, just like Arnold in Terminator. <laughs> yep. Hell yeah. <laughs> and just like I give to Arnold Week. Just like I give to Arnold every week. <laughs> Too bad it's not Arnold Week every week. I agree. How Actually, long, I've how long been. Do you think would be able to keep it up? Like he's been in a bunch of movies. Dude, for... I could do it indefinitely. I... Like I've actually. I don't think that's possible indefinitely. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he's not been in every movie. But I could keep talking about him every. Well, week. no, I'm saying like if we were literally just talking about movies, like we yeah. would run out sadly eventually. Yeah, but then just do them over again. That's true. <laughs> we should redo our old movies remake. I've been remakes really restrainful in not picking Arnold movies as much as I would like. You to. must restrain. <laughs> The only person that, work. like, I, I don't really love is, like, out of the action people is, like, Steven Seagal. But, like, I would never have an issue Dang. watching an Arnold movie. Where's Richie? <laughs> <laughs> I took my leg. I took my fucking leg. <laughs> ow, ow, ooh, ow. And it's like, <laughs> that was good because it was that guy. Not See our Steven previous episode Seagal. on Out yeah. for Justice. Richie. Boom, I'm going to fucking kill a... Get sticks over here. Get them, sticks. <laughs> Let's job out of the best stick fighter in the world. Um, I might have to right. this up a little bit. My fucking shit's being... My shit's being... So as we promised yeah. last week, we'll be back. We are back. And we are back. Yeah. We, uh, for Arnold, we... We didn't lie for once. Should we get into it? Yeah. Because uh, when you debuted the new feature, Weird Watches... A, about a year ago, maybe. Yeah, I feel like this is the kind of stuff that like weird watches was made for. This yeah. is like one of the ultimate weird watches this week. I think it was also funny because like this is, I I know we've kind of done this before unexpectedly, but this is like one of the first times when a weird watch is a TV movie. Mm -hmm. Um, we have instances before when I think you picked like the Kurt Russell and Native American film. But it was supposed to be a pilot that they like put into like a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, this was just like essentially like a Hallmark Christmas movie that was directed by Arnold Schwarzenegger. His, His one and only, only movie yeah. that he ever directed. 
So we're talking about Christmas in Connecticut from 1992. Yeah, not so like, the original. The, yeah, the remake. remake. Arnold. Which is weird that this is a remake because <laughs> I'm pretty sure these have nothing in common other than Christmas. Um, but go ahead. Arnold, at the height of his fame, yeah. just coming off Terminator 2, like the apex of his career, decides to direct Christmas in Connecticut. And like, I did some research and like, yeah. there's not much out there in this movie. Like, yeah. I don't understand why this happened. Yeah. Like, why does this exist? <laughs> Just like at Randy Orton, he was at the apex of his career. He's an apex predator. <laughs> um, he, yeah, um, you know, honestly, like, th- much worse things could have happened with Arnold being at the apex of his career. He could have done like a horrible movie. He could have done some Stop other. Where movie. My mom will shoot. Yeah, like well, still. he <laughs> could have done something horrible IRL. But... <laughs> Good lord. Well, I'm just saying, because of the apex of his, like, power, you know yeah. what I mean? Instead, he decided to direct he a... He could have some... slapped someone on the Oscars. Right. <laughs> he could have... He Instead, he did a, a somewhat wholesome subject to, like, Christmas with, like, yeah, a theme. And of, I'm glad he yeah. did, because this movie is w- weird. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's I'm wild. I'm so glad we saw it, because, yeah. like, <laughs> this is... One of the rare and it's times starring I'm like, some people that I'd never heard of before. Like yeah. Diane Cannon? I'd never heard of this person before. Um, but She's then there's in, Tony um, Curtis, which I have yeah. heard. <laughs> I know her from Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, which is like one of the best like swing in 60s movies. Hmm. Um, but yeah, this was like Chris a bunch of stars from the 60s and 70s. And Tony Curtis yeah. even earlier than that. Yeah. Doing a weird uh, TV Christmas movie. Yeah. <laughs> So, and if nothing else, Jesus Christ, this movie. You can tell Tony Curtis is having the time of his life yeah. making this movie. Like he's chewing up the scenery so much. So it's the poster like... for this looks like a damn porno. <laughs> it's so bad. It's like photoshopped or, or it's not photoshopped. It just looks bad. But on IMDb, it's like the main lady and like the dude that like he that she um, essentially falls in love with. Um, what's his name? Chris Christopherson. Yeah, I can't remember what his... I, I know Linda's the lady, I think. because No, it's not. Maybe it is. I don't know. I'm trying to think if I wrote down the name at all for the dude. Jefferson Jones. <laughs> but yeah, that cover, I'm like... Eh, that's the first I've seen this. That's a porno, dude. <laughs> She's hungry for ratings. He's hungry for dinner. I'm like... That's not an intriguing tagline at all. <laughs> it's also like kind of what happens in the film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both these people are thrust into this by outside forces. They're not. She she really doesn't give a shit about ratings. It's her like manager who is uh, what's his name um, Tony Curtis yeah. who kind of like <clears throat> brings all this together. Like, so the premise of this is that like she's a fake and she can't cook, but she's like written a bunch of like books and has all these like TV specials and she has like a a, a cooking show. Um, which they make this out to be like a huge scandal, but like this is something that I'm sure has happened before, but it doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense because it would be easier to like probably find a cook that has a personality than to just get a personality and like fake the whole thing. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. It makes no sense. <laughs> but like, it's kind of like, uh, what's it called? Like that one movie where they teach like astronauts to... To, or they teach drillers to be astronauts <laughs> instead of like just teaching Armageddon. the astronauts how to drill, yeah. which is like easy <laughs> as hell. Um, but they have, what's so hard oh, about drilling? Like, yeah. aim, yeah. aim at ground, yeah. turn it on. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, like, just but, overall yeah, in this, like, for the first two thirds, I was like, this movie's actually pretty like entertaining and i'm mm-hmm. on board but then the ending like it just goes so off the rails and i'm like i don't understand what any of this is about and i like i don't understand the message of this movie it just makes no sense the biggest issue with this movie is it's like an hour and 30 something minutes it's like <laughs> it's, it's definitely long, you can tell that it's cut 90. for tv because every once in a while there's just like a random cut off to yeah. black screen and then it comes back um so like the whole thing about this is that like it's just like a damn joke because like this what's his name jefferson jones is this like stand-up dude that like goes out to save this kid in the forest and like he comes back and his cabin's burned down and he's a national hero and as like a a fucking like the only thing they find left in his cabin is one of her books and then like 
you find out he doesn't really even he's not even a fan of hers but like and she's not even a real cook so it's kind of like this dynamic of like you know it takes for me it took a little too long to get going in the beginning mm-hmm. like if they cut out the first like 20 or so minutes and just started it sooner it probably would have been better it's weird they had a lot of weird stuff like the with the rescuing the kid which was like i guess sets him up as a national hero but it was kind of like a lot of the stuff they do in this movie is comical like farce but it's it's almost like supposed to be like played straight, mm-hmm. but it's almost not. It's it's mm-hmm. it's one of those films like uh, Cruel Jaws where you have to see it to believe it. Yeah. It's like what the fuck? what am I watching? Yeah, they do have some legit aerial footage here that I could tell was like real footage they shot at the beginning, but then it goes to an obvious fake cabin like instantly, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. It was funny because like right off the bat. Like, I thought that footage was awesome, yeah. too, but it's like, Christmas in Connecticut. And yeah, like, the, the this title is not looks like shit as well. Well, it's that's like, clearly not Connecticut. Yeah. It's, it's the Rocky Mountains, right. so it's already confused. Like, I'm like, what's going on? It's also, like, red <laughs> as fuck. It's like, um, <laughs> and his cabin randomly burned down, but it was, like, the worst blizzard in history. So it's Yeah, like, how you the think fuck this... did that happen? <laughs> did you also notice that, like, since Arnold directed this... One of the first scenes is a dude working off or <laughs> working out right <laughs> off the bat. Yeah, I was cracking up. They have uh, what's his name, Chris Chris Offerson, uh, Jefferson Jones over here, straight out of Marvel or DC Comics with that kind of name. Doing pull ups. Yeah, crunches. he's like, yeah. Um, As Arnold would say, keep pumping. Yeah. Did I mention this is your sister Linda? I'm like, like he wouldn't know. Like on the phone, there was a lot of weird like. Stuff like that, and this is even before we get to the part where like her friend, her her friends, like husband, her manager, and like some rand, and like, I think it's like somebody's nephew. They all pretend to be a family. Um, so it's yeah. Um, <laughs> also, like, uh, <laughs> what do you think about? Uh, at the beginning when they're cooking and stuff and they have all this like food that looks like horrible and like she's like i like to put mint and olive oil on my potatoes and cook them and i was like who's the fucking like ghost cooker here because they're worse than she is like who would put fucking mint and just oil on potatoes and put them in the oven <laughs> i'd try it i was more interested by the way like tony curtis was directing this Dude. tv show <laughs> i was like so cartoonish well he acts like a total like jerk and then like she's like actually guys just go to go home and it's like so she has final say but like he um what the fuck that's not tony curtis is it yeah when he was much younger oh okay i was like that doesn't look anything like him um i thought it was like um they're like uh i forget what it was like on google i typed in like a celebrity once and it was like a completely different person <laughs> it's uh uh peter falk if you type in peter falk on google it'll come up with some random dude first <laughs> oh, really? yeah it's not actually peter falk colombo's ultimate trick yeah so she's got an, an interest in these uh knickknacks and she like buys them and shit and like this one looks like absolute dog shit and it's twenty five hundred dollars and i was like oh my god dude like, this is when I knew, like, things were kind of... One of the first times I knew something was out of control was when, like, <laughs> these prices are all over the place. I was like, man, they don't have a grasp on reality over here in this <laughs> this fucking film. I don't know. I bet you there's lots of knickknacks like that that are super expensive. Yeah, but they're not sold, like, in New York on, like, Main Street. That looks like something you would find, like, in a craft store or something. <laughs> yeah, of all the things in this movie, that <laughs> one didn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> You weren't paying attention to this. One, right? <laughs> so, what do you have to say about this? Uh, what did it's you just think? it's so weird. Yeah, it's very misguided. Like the pl- the plan makes no sense. Like they had no chance of like successfully pulling off this trick on Chris Christopherson for no reason. Like wh- why? <laughs> yeah, it's weird because it's like it's shot. I guess live. It seems like at the very end. Mm-hmm. So it's like. How did they think this was ever going to work live? I guess they would assume that, like, everything would go to how they, like, planned it out. And, like, Mm -hmm. which would work if it was literally, you know, everybody was in on it. But, like, the only people, like, the people that 
weren't in on it was like um like Chris Christopherson. He didn't know that she couldn't cook, so like also like the one dude that's like everyone's boss, like Richard Roundtree. Shaft he just himself. goes as Prescott. Yeah, he when he finds out that like not only is it like she's fake, but the whole thing's fake. He like fucking throws a <laughs> fit. Like, how would he not know that everything's fake? Like he. Yeah. Signs off on the checks for, like, Tony Curtis's, like, shit that he's yeah, doing. Yeah, none of it makes any sense. But I, I will say, like, I like this movie. I'm glad we yeah. watched it. It was very entertaining because it was so weird and stupid. <laughs> and Tony Curtis was cracking <laughs> Dude, me up left and right. The part where he gets hit with the water gun and he chases after him. He's like, dur, 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 dur. <laughs> I was like, is this a fucking... It was so funny Fuck because up? this in that scene, the kid yeah. who was, was Pugsley from Adam's Family. Yeah. Did you notice that? Um, yeah. He's like, don't play with that face. Don't play with that and face. And he instantly, like, of course breaks he breaks it. it. But the funny part is Tony Curtis runs yeah. in and is like, whoa! Yeah, it's like so obvious he's running over just to fall. Like yeah. that time that I ran into that paint at your <laughs> exactly house. exactly what I was going to say. Jumped dude. straight into it. It reminded me of that so much. It was like, what? You like ran directly for the spill. Yeah. Um, but like just stuff like that kept happening and I was cracking up. This line cracked me up. I can't cook. She, he says, what are you moaning about? Uh, maybe the... She can't cook? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? That's the fucking, like, line. The um, thing I hated most was, like, the uh, the son-in-law character in this, who's, like, a... He's a weird... Yeah, that guy looked like Elnor from Picard <laughs> a little bit. So I was, it's like... very off I already was, like... But at one point, he says, I'll be back, and it's Arnold's voice. Yeah, I was cracking up, because he was also wearing the shades. Yeah. Um... At that point, I'm like, what am I watching? Like, well, what is this? Yeah, the whole movie was like a joke. Um, <laughs> but it was funny to watch. Yeah. Um, mainly, and it was... I was in full pointing out bullshit mode. Yeah. And, like, what was funny and, like, what I could, like, make fun of. Uh, like you said, the I'll be back. There was kind of, like, a thing they tried at the very end where, like, he finally was like, You're, you know, my career doesn't mean as much to me as you do and stuff. Which I was like, that's fine. But, like, they should have cut out, like, 30 minutes of this. And, yeah. like, you know... And especially that ending, like, when they actually do the filming, yeah. I was like, this sucks, man. It was just kind of like a, a so predictable. Yeah. But I, I mean, thought it was hilarious it. when um, she she gets to flip the flapjack in front of the whole family. And it actually, <laughs> and like, they're like, works. They're all like, whoa. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I was like, eh. Like, I love the smell <laughs> of human hair when it burns. This was actually funny, not that part, but Chris Christopherson's reaction. He was like, what the fuck? And that little kid's like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, Did you notice Arnold had a cameo? Yes. I didn't notice it until I read the trivia. Then I went back and yeah. saw it. Uh, I, was, I saw it. It was interesting that they would actually make this because it seemed like they were making this about older people falling in love when usually mm-hmm. these Hallmark movies, it's like, you know, she's a successful person coming to her hometown or he's coming to his hometown and... You know, they find somebody that's like, you know, they, they give up. Kind of like what they did in here where they give up, like, well, kind of. They, they give up the money and, like, the stuff for love. Yeah. But then, like, at the end of this, she gets everything she wanted anyway, <laughs> just to be herself. Like, the phones are ringing off the hook. Everybody's happy. So you're saying that, like, all these people that were, like, bought her books and were, like, huge fans of her character, of who she was, decided, you know what? I actually hated that. I'm glad that she was a fake. It's like, yeah, everybody's just And this unwatchable episode of TV, like, right. everyone liked for some Dude, reason. <laughs> this fucking guy at the end, I was like, what the fuck is going the on? The director? Oh, my God. Yeah, I was like, get this guy this out of here. This guy fucking sucks. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm going to kill you. Oh, you're ruining this. Oh, I was like, dude, it's shut extremely the annoying. fuck up. But Chris, Chris Christopherson was cracking me up when he's like, he's like reactions to everyone, like, "What the fuck is going on?" Well, he's like still doing the lines when everyone else is like is screwing up, and he's like, "I smell Christmas yeah. goose." <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, we're making flapjacks," and he's like, "Oh, is that Christmas goose I smell?" Yeah. <laughs> it was legit. And he comes funny. in in like this ranger outfit that like he's never worn. Um, and I think, like you mentioned, the the only thing that actually kind of works about this movie mm-hmm. is like the relationship between Chris Christopherson yeah. and Diane Cannon. But even that is weird because he knows she's married, or he thinks she's married, yeah. and she, he's like staying at the place with the husband. And like, it's just the whole thing is they both start kind of having like an affair, yeah. but then he finds out, oh wait, she's not with somebody, <laughs> and it's like, 
it would have been kind of like better if like I don't know. At least it would have made the character more make sense and yeah. likable if like say like maybe like three fourths of the way through the movie she says she tells him, Hey, just so you know, I'm actually not even married, like this is all a sham and then you could have went from there, but instead it was like and he could have finally kissed her, but mm-hmm. instead I think he like kisses her before she tells him. Mm-hmm. And it's like Okay, so you're just like cheating with this you know, I don't know. Um <laughs> I just thought that was kinda of, like you said, it was kinda of like like it works, but like the characters are mm-hmm. a little um not as likable because of that. Yep. <clears throat> she goes crazy when I suck her toes like a horse. <laughs> Tony Curtis, I was like, What the <laughs> fuck? Cause he, so they're not married or even together. Like she he's just her manager, but like He's trying to actually, like, fuck her the whole time. It's really weird. I would have been like, okay, so you're my manager, and just now you're trying to, like, yeah. fuck me? Like, okay. What the hell? I thought that was kind of, like, out of left field. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't really have anything else to say for this. Yeah, I mean... Or say for it, say about it, but... Um, if you want to see something weird, watch Christmas It's definitely, like... I don't really... You could have never told me Arnold directed this and I would have had no clue. Yeah. Like, this is literally, like... I don't know. Because it's not like I would say that, like, he put anything bad into this because I'm pretty sure he didn't write it or, like, do any of the camera work or anything. Mm-hmm. He was probably just there as, like, a dude on set being like, hey, you know, this or that. But it's not like you know i'm like oh man you should check this out because it's like fucking on john carpenter films and he's got like a vision i'm pretty sure this was like some stock fucking yeah. idea that they threw his way and he's like yeah i want to get a director's credit why not so yep which sucks because i would actually really like to see something that was written by him and directed by him to see like what because he has like a lot to say especially about the political landscape yeah, um, my final thought is like I'm definitely gonna throw this movie in the Christmas <laughs> rotation and see like blow everyone's mind because <laughs> it's people are gonna start killing themselves. <laughs> it is very Christmassy. It is, yeah. Like they they do a good job with that um, for sure. Um, there are scenes in this. It's weird because there are scenes that are highly entertaining, and then there are scenes in this that are highly boring. Mm-hmm. It's like a movie and annoying. Of, of like hills and valleys. Yeah, very. Very weird, but you're right about one thing. It was a weird watch. <laughs> it was dog shit. I'm like, would you watch the next one? <laughs> <laughs> would you continue to watch this movie over and over <laughs> every day of your life? Um, yeah. So, uh, end of days. What do you think about the that? main event? End <laughs> of days. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm anxious to talk about it. <laughs> Did you say anxious? Mm-hmm. You're like, I have anxiety. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess that's nothing to laugh about. Um. Okay, well, I'll let you kind of start it off then and give us some info about End of Days and all that fun stuff. Yeah, so End of Days <laughs> came out in yeah. 99. Um, Hell yeah. I saw it in theaters. <laughs> That's it. That's you like, you get up and you walk out. You're like, see ya. <laughs> and I liked it, mm-hmm. and I kind of haven't revisited it much over the years. Right. And watching it this time, I think I like underrated it because I loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was as good as ever. But End of Days is a horror thriller. Yeah. Starring Arnold. Action. Which is, very. Yeah, action. Yeah. Horror thriller um, with some nice bits of comedy thrown in. It's horror. Um, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. But basically, this is the movie where it's Arnold versus the devil. Yeah. <laughs> and. Which I'm sure everybody's heard of that before, right? <laughs> well, not everybody. <laughs> you ever Everyone heard of Arnold versus the devil? Um, um, directed by Peter Hyams. Yeah, and I knew, I think I brought this up over the years, and you were like, yeah, I've never seen that. So, yeah, this was something I've always like been interested in, but I've heard bad, horrible things about it. So I think it has it, a bad reputation. It put me off. and It wasn't a big hit when it came after out. After watching it, I fucking have no clue why this movie got like a bad rating or got like... like kicks on, ass. Well, like, yeah, like on all this stuff, it's like, it has like a... 11 on Rotten Tomatoes and a 32 oh, audience wow. score, and I was like... Well, that just tells you that those numbers are bogus. Well, I mean, those are like the critics, which means they must have just shit all over it, which I don't get that, because I thought this movie was really good. <laughs> that was great. I mean, it's not like... I'm not going to say it's a masterpiece, but right. like, it's a movie about Arnold fighting the devil. Like, right. And on that premise, it delivers everything yeah. you'd want. 
and it's it's not as actiony as is is you know usually is, which is mm-hmm. good. it's a good thing. But there's plenty of action, which is awesome. Right. I think there's bad word of mouth when this movie came out because I think Arnold wasn't very happy with it. Like he and the director mm. didn't get along. I was reading about. Hmm. I wonder why. I think Arnold didn't like the way he was shooting it because he thought it was too dark. Um, uh, which we definitely criticized the relic. Yeah. For that, which oh, because was... that's the same guy. Yeah. I didn't I have it. It was the perfect balance in this movie. This movie looks Yeah, awesome. I would say I wouldn't really like complain about that. Has he ever seen the relic? Fucking yeah. that movie is awesome. That's where he went too far. Yeah. That movie is essentially ruined because mm-hmm. fucking you can't see anything. But this movie it looks amazing. It's yeah. like dark and gothic mm-hmm. and like reminded me of the crow, kind of. Um, yeah, this is essentially like this guy wanted to make like a Batman movie. Or a noir. This yeah. is like definitely a noir because Arnold's kind of a detective. And it way. is a Batman movie because yeah. at the beginning they say you're on Gotham Radio. <laughs> um, but like this movie has Gabriel Byrne, Robin Tunney, star of Vertical Limit. Yeah, that's what that's what <laughs> I saw her. I was like, oh shit, this might not be good. <laughs> Which I liked her because I this is the first time I saw her was in this movie and I was like, she's cool. She's okay in this. Um, Kevin Pollock, Rod Steiger. CCH Pounder! <laughs> Rod Steiger in his final role. Oh, damn. Yeah, legend. Legend. Where is he at? Who did he play? He played the... Uh, CC Pounder? The the priest. Oh, nice. Father um, Kovac. Uh, Mir- <laughs> Are you telling me Father Kovac stole $40,000 worth of chicken cheese and rats? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, forgive me, God, for I will steal <laughs> Uh, Kim Pola, let's see here. Miriam Margoyles and Udo Kier. Yeah. So the film follows former New York Police Department detective Jericho Kane. Great name. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> after he saves a banker. See, I didn't. I never knew she was a banker, but um, from an assassin, finds himself embroiled in a religious conflict and must protect an innocent young woman, Tunny. Oh wait, this is these are two different people. Okay. Who is chosen by evil forces to conceive the Antichrist with Satan, Christine York? Yeah. Um, so we got some cool credits here with fire, gargoyles, relics, religious artifacts, books, old scrolls, all burning, or as I wrote in my notes, all burning. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked that up. Vatican, Rome, 1979, 3 a.m. Yeah, so we got some cool stuff here at the beginning. Um, this is essentially showing like the birth of like Robin Tunney's character, um, which they don't really. I guess they sh- who is she supposed to be? Because her and Satan, I guess like he wants to have sex with her to produce the Antichrist. So is she like supposed to be like a reincarnation of Christ or something? Well, that like, scroll or whatever yeah. said that a child would be born on this day. Right. So they were like basically. So it's just a, they're checking yeah, every baby okay. to see if she has the mark, and she right. did. The, the whole plot and the yeah it, like is ridiculous it makes no sense like it's so it's so crazy it's a little uh weird but i was able <laughs> it, to enjoy it doesn't the matter film without I mean, it's, it yeah for once but i was thinking like cuz arnold like saves this movie hardcore oh big time not saves it but he like makes this movie at the beginning they show like it's a it's a special <laughs> night because there's a comet flying over the moon yeah not over the moon. <laughs> There's a comet flying over. The it's moon. like it's he's driving a rocket, and it made me remember. Like, do you remember when the Hale Bob comet came to town in 1997? Was that the Kids Bob comet? <laughs> no, that was a different one. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, I remember that. I was thinking like you're like actually it never happened. Well, gotcha. I think <laughs> it was a hoax. <laughs> <laughs> Riker got me again. We never walked on the sun. <laughs> I think that's the coolest thing yeah i've ever seen in my life because i was trying to think like uh, like it was so mm-hmm. i remember just looking up at it like this is awesome you were like i was you were like i was awesome just you at the miz you're like <laughs> dude fuck yeah yeah i mean that kind of stuff is, is really cool and i was doing some research like mm-hmm. that comet will only be visible once every 2500 years yeah so, so we'll like no see one's it, seen it yeah. since like that long. <laughs> we'll never see it again and that comet is like estimated to be four billion years old. Damn! So it's just like to see something like that yeah. in real life is the a comet's blessing. tail was like. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to bring that up. No, it was, it was awesome. It was so cool, and it reminded me of that time. He's like, because that bomb, 
<laughs> that, that vomit. Bomb. That vomit. <laughs> the comet that vomit. It was hanging around for a while. Yeah. He wouldn't fucking leave. He was yeah. just like... Anyways, back to Arnold. He's <laughs> awesome in this movie. He's on the vomit comet. <laughs> yeah, man. And I think, like, this is... This is, like, his most subdued role ever, and but it's also really he, good. He gets to go full Arnold in some of yeah. the moments, too. When he's, he's on the radio, like, get the fuck down here, now! Dude. <laughs> and I'm like, put the cookie down, now! Yeah, that part was so fucking ridiculous. Um, and we'll get to it, but his scene where he confronts the devil, and he's, like, yelling yeah. at him. That's, like, the centerpiece of this movie, and it's great. Yeah, Arnold. <laughs> Where's the shooter? On the roof. So, uh, so are we. Sky 2, get the fuck down here now! It's like, Jesus! Did you like the fact that he did get to the chopper? Yeah, he did. <laughs> and used the chopper to, like, fucking grab a dude that was jumping to his death in midair. That was truly yeah, that a was cool legit. cool stunt and some cool mm-hmm. special effects. <laughs> like the fucking <laughs> almost dude was CG. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? <laughs> like, the stunt was real, but that part was CG. It's like, what? It's like, why did you even do it? Yeah, it was legit. Um, the rooftop antics. So at first, I thought there was like a plan to kill this baby, but like it's the opposite. Mm-hmm. They're like, like you said, they're checking, and then they do like a ritual, like killing a snake and putting blood on it, and then they're like, essentially, um, the guy that plays like the doctor becomes her Udo therapist. <laughs> Udo, <laughs> Udo, which he, I was reading the trivia, like he he's was awesome. He's been in a bunch of stuff. yeah. He was supposed to play the devil in this movie, Dude. but the studio didn't want to have two German people with German accents as the leads. I didn't even know that the dude that was the devil had a German Yeah, yeah accent. I think he has like a German or Austrian. They're or... like, hey, you're German. Don't do a German accent. <laughs> He's like, because we can't do it. Um, he would have been a good devil, though. I actually have a couple people that I have later on in my notes that I was like, man, this would be so good if this dude was the devil. Um but like, um, and then like the uh, the lady that's like his nurse becomes like her stepmother. Mm-hmm. So they're watching, waiting, commiserating, to perform their unholy rites. Yeah. So twenty years later, we're in New York, where all the best things happen. Yeah, another New York movie. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm loving it. So radio guy giving major Halloween three vibes at the beginning <laughs> of this. I was like, dude, this is fucking awesome. So this movie took advantage of Y2K fever. Yeah, we were all like. Fearing the turning of the millennium. Yeah, so people that don't know what Y two K is, if you're watching this and you don't, you you weren't born um, at that time. Essentially, what happened was like they thought that like all computers that had like you know banks, like data, all that kind of shit, it would roll over from 1999 and would go to like the year zero, and everything would be like fucked. Yeah, but. Literally, they just updated something, and it was fine. Yeah. So it's almost like knowing that fact, you could change the program. And fix right! It, which is what everyone did. Right, yeah! It's not like a magical thing. Yeah. That, yeah. It's not like you could, couldn't stop it. But pe- people were legit afraid of yeah, what was going to happen. Yeah, people were like stockpiling shit, and the people were like, oh, the well. end of days is here, 2000. I mean, I think even if computers weren't a part of that, that probably would have been something people would have... Because, like, anytime some big event like that happens, there's always people that are like, holy shit, you know, I mean, look at Jack Chris Jericho, I mean, fucking Y2J. <laughs> um, so, sewers blow up, and Satan is released from hell. This movie's chock full of explosions. Yeah, and um, they have some, like, invisible uh, antics here, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks good, too. It's not, like... You know, you can yeah. barely see it. It's like almost predator cloaking technology mm-hmm. um, effects, which is really cool. Um, and then the demon force stalks and possesses the man. <laughs> Gabriel Byrne. And I think this yeah. is the first thing I saw him in. And I liked I, I liked him in this movie. And he's great in everything. Yeah, I thought he was okay in this. I think there are people they could have cast that would have been a better yeah. Satan. But I'm not going to sit here and like shit on his performance yeah. or anything like he was fine um but he has a great introduction because when yeah. he like comes out of the bathroom after being possessed yeah he like he goes for some boobage yeah he kisses a random dude's wife in front of her and then she's like e. but the best part is the guy's like what's going on here and he's like mm. yeah and like scares him <laughs> he with kisses him <laughs> <laughs> they start kissing no yeah it's uh it's, and you're like whoa yeah 
He really is the devil. <laughs> You're on Gotham Talks. <laughs> Say something interesting. Do something! Wednesday, December 29th, 1999. Arnold of the Dark doing his best Hulk Hogan at Jack O'Neill by putting a gun to his head and about to pull the fucking trigger. Yeah, I forgot that he pulls a Martin Riggs at the, right at the beginning of yeah, the movie, dude. Yeah, essentially, like, like, yeah, he's like Jack O'Neill and Stargate or, like, fucking Hulk Hogan IRL where he's, like, fucking about to kill himself and then somebody's like, hey, man, what's up? And he's <laughs> like, okay, well. <laughs> he's like, guys, when you hear the word guys. <laughs> yeah, don't it. kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. So essentially, like, you find out later, but, like, his wife and his, like, uh, daughter were fucking killed by, I'm assuming, it, it's kind of like, I guess, I was going to say pranksters. Um, Ultimate prank. Yeah, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> um, <laughs> April Fool's. By uh, intruders, you know, thieves, mm-hmm. charlatans. Um, they come in and they, like, kill his fucking wife and, and kid, and, um, like, he's been living with that ever since and he's like i'm a cop and i should have been there and it's kind of alluded to that like the reason why this happened is because like he blew the whistle on some crooked shit going down on the police um yeah. and like they possibly sent some dudes in mass to like get revenge and kill him and stuff but like, i guess the wife and daughter were there so they killed them instead and like fuck you um and i thought that i thought that was pretty like I wouldn't say, like, it was cool, but it was an interesting thing to put on his character because it, like, they never really, like, he, they never talked that, like, he went on a quest to find out who these people were or, like, anything like that. It's essentially, like, they died and then he's just, like, literally, like, left to, like, yeah. be on Earth by himself. It does add some more emotion to, yeah. like, his performance because right. he normally doesn't play, like, a tortured soul, you know? Right, yeah. <laughs> but he's great in it. Yeah. Like, and that actually pulls it off, comes into play, especially at the end of the film, which I applaud. Yeah. Um, what did you think of the smoothie that Arnold made for breakfast? Dude, oh my god. So <laughs> I love I'm this about to run this staple. down. Yeah, this is, this is <laughs> essentially like something that was brought into this film from other yeah. movies. So uh, let's run down what we got here. Um, his friend who's played by... Do you know who he's played by? Kevin Pollack. Yeah. Uh, who's been in a ton of stuff. Um, he, From Willow. Remember, Willow! He was one of the little dudes, the little munchkins. He's like, Willow. <laughs> uh, he brings he brings him coffee. You know, that's that's nice of him. But then he, like, pours it into a blender with Pepto-Bismol. Left a, part of a leftover beer. I think, like, a banana. Uh, leftover Chinese food. And a piece of pizza that was on the floor, like, face down. <laughs> and he fucking <laughs> blends it up. And he, like, starts drinking it. And he's like, hey, do you want some of this? And the guy's like... So yeah, like you said, this would is, you drink it? Uh, if I was paid to, yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't foresee myself doing that IRL. <laughs> it seemed kind of weird, <laughs> just to say. Um, well, I've got a surprise for you because right here. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, I was like, holy shit! <laughs> I would actually try it for the podcast. <laughs> uh, protection detail. Um, yeah, so they're, like, essentially, like, he's not a cop anymore, but him and his Private friend, security. Yeah, are, like, essentially, like, PIs. They're, yeah. like, essentially... They still want to do the thing they did before, but, like, they're sick of the fucking bullshit at the police, you know, and all that crap. Um, so, dude grab Arnold grabs this possessed homeless guy as he's about to jump. Like we said earlier, it was really cool. Like, the dude is, like... He talks, but he has, like, no tongue. <laughs> She's like... The reaction here was really interesting because it was like, she was like, you said this guy said something to you? He's like, yeah, why? What's the problem? And he's like, oh, uh, he doesn't have a tongue. And he was like... I was like, holy shit, dude. Like, the way he... Like, I think Arnold gets a bad rap for the, his acting, quote-unquote. But here it was like, he was genuinely, like, He's great. Shocked. He's awesome. Yeah. I think he gets a bad rap because a lot of stuff he does, you don't tend to really need acting chops yeah. to be, like... In action films, mm-hmm. but this, this is was, one of his finer performances and yeah, one of his cool because he movies. gets to actually like act. Yeah, um, uh, I wish he would have done more like horror adjacent stuff. Dude, like, totally. Like Terminator, I think is the only other real horror movie. Right? He's been yeah, in. like the first one. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and Maggie, we have to watch Maggie. Somewhere. Yeah, that's another one I've always wanted to watch. Yeah, uh, find the dude's lair. He cut out his own tongue. So, Robin Tunney, we already talked about that from Vertical Limit. <laughs> My note says, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, he's gonna fuck you, Christine. So, an albino dude that's, like, possessed. 
that only well not possessed because like only she can see him so i was assuming this was probably like maybe a demon mm -hmm. from like hell that like he sent to like torment her because no one else can see this like person um it's i think he's played by like a, a character actor or whatever um it's yeah. somebody that's like albino irl and like he kind of has cross eyes a little bit but he's like he has a very menacing look yeah he's um, like screaming at her and all this yeah. stuff and like you know he's gonna find you and he's gonna fuck you and all this stuff and um and then he like turns to glass with a, a pretty uh impressive effect yeah it was decent yeah it was it wasn't like it wasn't something from like you know phantom menace like or like yeah. the remakes where I'm like this doesn't really hold up now. It like actually still it's fine. Yeah, it's, yeah. And I I always call out bad CGI. And I like, call it out. This movie has some questionable CGI, but you know, it's minimal. It's better than some of the stuff I've seen. Oh yeah, big time. Oh yeah. Um, her psychiatrist did the satanic ritual. Oh yes, I already talked about that. Uh, this was a weird line. Why didn't you tell me? I'm your stepmom. Like who the fuck says that? Like <laughs> I wouldn't be like. Matt, why didn't you tell me? I'm your friend. It's like, uh, it's like oh, kind of weird dialogue here. That script needed another pass. Yeah, that was the only thing in this that I had that's like that. That I was. Yeah, overall, I thought weird. the dialogue and like the writing in this yeah, was, was very good. good. Um, but we skipped a, like oh, going yeah, back to when he uh, we skipped it. He confronts the dude in the subway tunnel. Yes, that's when I texted you and I was like, "This movie is a nore, dude. Like, this looks yeah. so cool." Like, it's just, the lighting was perfect. Yeah, I didn't write anything down about that because I knew that we would talk about it or, like, you had had a note about it. Um, the, Like, the atmosphere is always, mm -hmm. like, real smoky and it's just, like, it has a great look to it. Yeah, agreed. Um, do you believe in God? Maybe once, not anymore. What happened? We had a difference of opinion. I thought my wife and daughter should live. He felt otherwise. <laughs> I was like, dude, this is great dialogue. Yeah. Like, it's sad and it's like, you know, it, it reminds me of a... Uh, signs where like he blames god for something that was out of control and stuff mm -hmm. and it's like you know one of those seals were like like just the way he said it too it's like you can tell there's like hatred there and shit mm -hmm. um some word dream or something wait what oh yeah so like the satan shows up and like there's possibly some like sex that happens between like the, oh yeah the dudes but it's like oh, I, oh yeah you can't even tell if it's like a dream or what not because That's... she like fucking wakes the one lady robin tunney wakes up and like she dreamt that so it's like i'm assuming it happened but she was like had like a connection about it or something you're talking about when he goes to udo kier's house yeah and he has sex with like, like horns he has sex with like the dude's wife and daughter and they like kiss and all that shit and they're like merging together and it's but it's weird because they, they morph memorable. into, like, Robin Tunney's character. So, Yeah, I thought that was very creepy and well done. Yeah, I was like, this is unnecessary <laughs> and unneeded. No, they. I think it adds to the character of the devil. Like, they make him yeah. super evil in this movie. Like, he just can't stop, like, being evil. I think he's evil, but I think his performance isn't good enough to, like, back that up. Really? Yeah. Mm, it didn't bother me at all. I, I thought he was I didn't, I didn't I think was it good. was bad. I just didn't think it was, like... I didn't believe it. Like, I was like, this guy is not... Like, he's doing evil shit, but he's not saying anything that's, like, really... You know what I mean? Like, he just didn't have the... I feel like... He wasn't going Tony Curtis and, like, Well, way there were... The if, if he had been, like, Lance Hendrickson or, like, Alfred Molina, because yeah. I was like... Or Jeffrey Combs, I would have been, like, horrified. <laughs> but I was like, well, yeah, you're seeing stuff like he punches people and their heads explode, but it, he just has power, so anybody could do that. It wasn't like when he was speaking normally, like he would just kind of like speak normally, and it wasn't like not like I'm expecting him to be like fucking yelling all the time, but I feel like the words he said a lot of times didn't have like the the threat behind them. Hmm. It's like he would do something that would like I guess like be scary, but you know it's like well. He just did something, but then when he goes back to, like, normal mode, he's just a human. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, I, 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 it, I don't think that's anything where I'm, like, trying to rag on the actor or anything. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe it just needed a, a little something extra. A little more juice. Yeah, but I, I agree. Like, the scenes of him doing stuff like that or, like, punch, he punches, I think, the one dude and his head explodes. <laughs> that was so awesome. Or, like, he kills the one lady or, like, he just... 
you know, blows up that one, like, He crucified the one dude on the ceiling? Yeah, like, stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's the aftermath of what happens, but there's never a time when you really, like... Like, at least for me, I was, like, really... Like, when he's normally talking, it's not threatening, if that makes any sense. Yeah, he's just trying to be a man. Right. As he's credited. Mm-hmm. What about when he uh, he kills the skater with the Jinko jeans? <laughs> Did you notice that? It reminded me of Death Note. That's, like, something that happens at the beginning oh, really? of that show. Where, like, uh, some people are talking shit, and then, like, they run to go out into traffic and get, like, insta-gibbed. The way this guy dies, though, is comical. It was awesome. It was so funny. He, he like... He gets killed not by the bus, but, like, the force of the bus of being jerked back by, like, prop wires. <laughs> <laughs> because he's so far away from the bus when he dies, it's like... Because you can tell, it's like, you know. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, like, he's like... He's wearing this shirt that says Satan Rules, and he's like, cool shirt. And I he's like, that. fuck you! And then he's like... Hey, kid. He's like... He's like... He's like, <laughs> hey, Lonnie. <Yeah. laughs> Get He's, your ass get your killed ass, by a bus. Get your head up. <laughs> well, my favorite part is after yeah. he gets killed, he's like, nice shirt. Yeah. <laughs> he really liked that shirt. <laughs> he wasn't joking. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> um, There was also some, like, I also, like, wanted to see more of this, though, is where, like, he interacted with people that, like, and, of course, he knows, like, all their, everything about their them. Their sins. Yeah, it's like, um... They have a show on CW called Lucifer where, like, this dude plays the devil and, like, it's really cool because, like, he can, he's, like, not necessarily super evil, but he'll strike, like, a deal with people and then he comes calling if they, like, you know, don't do their shit and, like, he'll, like, show them what Satan really looks like and they turn, like, insane Mm. and shit like that, which is really cool. And, like, but the part where he, like, talks to the dude, like, the cop and he's, like, you seduce young boys to, like, do all this shit and he's like, you better let me in here. And he's like, you know, remember who you serve. And he's like, okay. And it's like shit like that where it's like he knows to the core of like everybody. It's kind of like in Dogma where like the angels go to like that boardroom meeting and are like allude to all this horrible shit that these boardroom members are doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it's like that kind of stuff. It's like um, that was really cool. I would like to see more mm-hmm. of that. Um, yeah, like you said, old dude gets crucified to the ceiling. And their reactions are just like, Arr. nobody That's goes right. over the top and is like screaming or anything. Yeah, but they're like, obviously, like you can see it in their faces that they're like, holy shit, they're yeah. scared. Yeah, and I think Kevin Pollock, like, he can be annoying in movies sometimes, <laughs> but in this movie, it's like just the right amount yes. of Kevin Pollock of annoying. No, <laughs> <laughs> but when he's like, well, I'm never sleeping again. I was like, yeah, yeah hilarious. True. <laughs> um. So, uh, speaking of Kevin Pollock and Satan, I want to talk about probably the greatest scene in this entire fucking film. Dude. (laughs) In a movie full of great moments, this was truly one for the ages. Um, (laughs) So, if you guys want to follow along, this takes place at 58 minutes and 22 seconds in the film. Um, So, Satan is is hanging around where, like, Arnold and um, Pollock are, and... um, he starts pissing, and he, like, pisses gas at Black it. Black oil. Yeah, it, like, goes to, like, the van where they're using their stakeout. And he sets a match and, like, lights it, and it goes to blow up the van. And Kevin Pollock reacts three times <laughs> to his own fucking death. And then they insert a random shot of Satan, and he's like... <laughs> He's it's like, easily like the delightful. funniest thing I think I've seen in a movie that's supposed to be serious. <laughs> it was great. It was so good because like, it was funny because you were like, the director and the actor decided to put that on film, and I'm like, well, yeah, I, yeah, I agree, but for some reason the editor decided to use all the cuts. <laughs> like he put, it's like in a Jackie Chan stunt. Yeah, they show it over and over. Like again. police story where angles. he jumps down is like, doo, doo, doo. <laughs> like, no, no, no. I was just like cracking up, and I was, I rewound it like five. Times. <laughs> the devil like, he makes an O face. He's like so delighted yeah. with what he's done. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, what the fuck is this? This is like hilarious, yeah. and it was just it actually. I mean, it fits for like Satan, honestly, mm-hmm. because he's like, oh, you know, <laughs> this is great. Like, thinks it's hilarious, but for them to like show, it's like um. Monty Python and the Holy Grail, where the dude's running up, and then he's running up. It's like, literally, yeah. they rewind the fucking explosion three times, because he's like... <laughs> and I'm like... 
But I freeze framed it though. I think it's only like four frames. It's like yeah. blink and you'll miss it. But if you notice it, oh my god, it's it. so great. <laughs> <laughs> but then after that, like, there's antics going on in her apartment, and despite the flames, the devil walks right in the front door. Yeah. <laughs> 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 why don't you start a distraction and we'll walk right out of hell um so the stepmom has some sort of like powers or something i think that's been given to her by satan yeah she's because like she satan like has witch. these like claws or whatever when well, i never like, noticed that before until yeah. this time i was like dude there's like she, so many she, cool touches in yeah this she starts fighting arnold and she's like whooping his ass <laughs> uh and then like you know the the other or the uh what's it called um, the upper hand is given to Schwartz and he's like Bleh. he says kicking ass um actually he barely kind of gets out of there with his life yeah um so uh, I have to give this movie props because they like don't make him like an invincible bastard in this film he's yeah. like a he's a man just trying to do the right thing um so we've got a really cool scene here with like it's like action but it's it's really cool because like um He's, like, they get arrested by, like, the police officer and, like, the police detective that are, like, okay, you know, we just want the the girl or whatever. And, like, they've been swayed and, like, or I guess, like, possessed by, yeah. like, Satan. Under the influence of the right. devil. And um, they're, like, okay, okay. And he's, like, and he puts his hands behind his back and he has, like, two pistols in his, like... Uh, jacket cuffs, I guess, and he's like, boom, 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 and it's really, really awesome. I was like, I was jumping dude, out of my seat, like, yeah. woo, yeah. Arnold dual wielding, like just blowing people away. I love fucking murder. The only thing that would have made it better is if he was dual wielding clubs. If he was dual wielding rocket launchers, <laughs> like what? No, seriously, yeah, this was legit, dude. It was such a cool scene. Yeah. Um. So then we've got something like you were saying, like the plot, whatever, but like. I wrote this down just because I always write things down that I was kind of like, what the fuck? Uh, where it was like, usually like it's known, you know, 666 in the, in the Bible. They're like, that's the number of the beast. Um, but like, they're like, <laughs> in this film they say, well, actually like in the mirror, it's 999. Yeah, if you turn it upside down. It's right. <laughs> but then they're like, yeah, but then that would only be like the year 999. But then they're like, it's 1999. And I was like, it's pretty thin. It's like they're stretching this shit like taffy over here. But it's like he attempts to he attempts this unholy ritual every thousand years. Right. So he tried it in nine nine nine, and I hope they make that movie. Number so. nine nine nine. <laughs> and he's back for round. It's just kind of like like you said. It's like stretching. Yeah. It's. Um, <laughs> I'm like, well, I'll allow they, it, but watch yourself. Yeah, I think, I think they did that just so they could be like, look, we're different, and it's not six six six. It's like, I don't think they were alluding to the year. <laughs> they were just saying the mark would be like. I think um, they were expecting everyone to be like, whoa! Yeah! And was everybody like, was like, blow <laughs> me! So the man says, now you're making me angry. You don't want to see me angry. Do you know what he's about to say here? Or do you... This is the best scene in the movie. Yeah. I want you to read it then. Uh, so you got this. Are you this serious? is where okay. Arnold is confronting Satan. Yeah. And this is what he says. This is like pretty laughable, but I loved it. Oh, it's um, great. <laughs> I'm going to try to. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Oh, you think you're bad, huh? You're a fucking choir boy compared to me. A choir boy! And it's like, what? You know you're talking to the devil, right? (laughs) And he's like, you're in touch with your anger. I admire that. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to have a drink. Um, I thought this... I love this scene. Yeah, I like this scene, too. I thought it was hilarious that he would tell Satan that he's a choir boy. And I'm like, (laughs) have you, like raped and killed people and set them on fire and blown them up because I'm pretty sure he's got some shit on you. (laughs) He's done that just within the past (laughs) day. (laughs) He's like, you're nothing compared to me. You're a fucking choir boy. I'm like, are choir boys like badasses now? Like, what are you talking about? But yeah, like, I agree with you. Like, it's it's a great line. It's awesome and hilarious, but also, like, later on this scene becomes, like, the darkest point in the movie where he, like, shows, he makes him relive the experience. Yeah, of, like, because he wasn't there when his, like, wife and daughter were killed but he shows him like you know this you know i could make this go away and like they could be back and all this shit and like then he's just like it's not real you know this is an illusion and it's like this is how the devil tempts you he shows you what you want to see so he was like you know 
It was really cool too because it was the way it was you'd shown. agree to pretty much anything if you were on fire. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, Kevin God. I was like, oh, uh, yeah. If you were on fire three times, <laughs> so at what point did he give him the deal? Was it the point when he was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, I got a deal for you. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Um, I thought it was funny. Arnold flips Satan out of a window. He's like, "Come on, I'll help you." And he's like, "Fuck you." <laughs> I was like, what? I was reading the IMDb quotes, yeah. and one of them was Arnold, or whatever, Jericho, yeah. says, fuck you, and throws the devil out of a window. And I'm like, that is the yeah. greatest moment in movie history. I was cracking threw the up. devil out of a fucking window. Yeah. I thought that was hilarious, too, because I was like, well, I guess the devil either doesn't care or he has no ability to fly because he literally just eats shit. That's what Roger Ebert was criticizing. He's like, I don't understand the devil rules. Like, he gets shot with a pistol and he's fine, but then he gets shot with a machine gun and he gets hurt. Like, it makes no sense. Which, but don't if, don't, well, I think, if you're thinking about that, like, well, this no, movie's think, not working for you. I think the I think it's it makes a lot of sense. I think like there's only so much that he can prevent damage to the body. Like later in the film, when they get in that huge crash. The the body is literally in pieces, and that's when he's like, "Okay, I can't keep using this body anymore," and he like evacuates it. Mm-hmm. So it's like there's only a certain amount that he can kind of protect this body from, and like it's already been shot a bunch, and then eventually it gets like ripped in two. And at that point, it's like, okay, you know, what good is it to you if you literally just have an upper half? <laughs> so you might as well just become. Somebody else, because it's just a body. He doesn't have to be that specific guy. Or become a giant dinosaur. Right. You know what I mean, though? Yeah. So, like, to me, it makes like it makes sense, because it's not like... It's not like they've established in this film that, like, say this is a vampire movie and, like, crosses work, and then, and then in one scene they don't work for no reason. You know what I mean? There are no real rules. There, there are rules that don't really even matter, because, you know, the movie is about like this other thing not about like yeah. how much damage satan can take because you know <laughs> yeah i think that at that point it's kind of like what <clears throat> one thing i thought about was uh there's a couple scenes where they go into like the underground layer of this church yeah where like these dudes are working on like scientific studies uh-huh and it reminded me so much of the guys from prince of darkness i was just thinking that yeah i was like dude this movie should be called prince of darkness 2 end of days they, they could be in the same universe and it would be a better ending <laughs> Uh, Wilhelm scream. They're part of the PCU. <laughs> PCU! Uh, Prince Cinematic Universe. <laughs> so, so Batman would be in that yeah. <laughs> Purple Rain. I'm going to bust that devil. <laughs> so we got at a, an hour, 22, and 55 minutes, some sort of stock scream. It's either like Wilhelm <laughs> scream or something, where they're like leaving this church and all these people are like, <laughs> Um. So Arnold tries to T-1000 on the back of the car. Did you see that where he like jumps on the back of the car and tries to hold on? And it's like, nope. Uh, but they crucify him anyway. But uh, it doesn't really seem to do anything. He like gets down and it's, it's you know, like they he's healing up and stuff. Um, like that's the second movie I can think of where Arnold gets crucified. <laughs> Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. So... Uh, I don't know if you have any notes before this, but I was going to talk about the scene where, like, his friend comes back. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it's cool that his friend comes back because he was, like, burning alive, but Satan, like, let him live if he helped him out. But in the end, he ended up, like, not being able to kill Arnold. Even, like, you know, he took this deal and stuff, and it's like, yeah, I'll fucking help you if you just, like, don't send me to hell. and Or, like, you know, burn me alive or I don't die. And then, in the end, he was like, you know, I can't fucking do this to Arnold. He's my best friend and stuff like that. And so he lights him on fire and he dies again. Um, but I thought that was cool because it was like, it wasn't like he resisted Satan's like power to take him over. It was that like, in the end, when faced with like the face, like the face to face of his like friend, he couldn't do it. It wasn't like, you know, he has some sort of like, you know, what's it called? Mary Sue ability to just be like, <laughs> fuck you to the Satan, <laughs> to the Satan. Um, I thought that was cool though. He put friendship first. Yeah, FF. Yeah, it's um, a good way to redeem his character. Right. Him. Yeah, and it wasn't because yeah, they could have gone the whole like he tries to fight Arnold and dies bullshit. But they, like you said, they went the route of like redeeming his character and like when his character really wasn't like a backstabber until this point, and then you're like, 
you know, it it's it makes sense why he even like took the deal in the first place because he was fucking blown up. Um, speaking of blowing up, Arnold blows up Satan and a bunch of followers and some innocent possessed people, possibly <laughs> oh, yeah. with a fucking bunch of grenade launchers or some shit. I was cracking up. I was just like. I was loving it so much because yeah. I was like machine gunning and rocket, like grenade launching the devil. And I'm like, and it Satan does not gets, get cooler. Yeah, than Satan this. gets broken arrowed. It's so <laughs> bad. It was cracking me up. He's like, flies. But it looks awesome. It's yeah. spectacular. Like when the, the subway car crashes yeah. and stuff. I'm like, dude, this is great. He's like, <laughs> dude, that dummy and broken arrow. Jesus. <laughs> um, so the conductor gets Kali Maud over here. Yeah, fucking. another great fucking gore effect yeah and he gets pulled out the fucking window um and they finally make it to like this church where like uh arnold is like throws down his gun and he's just like god help me you know like i'm praying he's finally like i guess like giving it over to god and like praying to him and stuff because everything nothing else has worked and that's when he like i guess sees like um like Satan appears in his like main form, and it's like, what do you think of the CG? Uh, not great, unfortunately. It's um, not horrible, but it's, it's a cool it's, looking. It's essentially monster. like a big like bat leather wing or something. Yeah. It's it's very like, I don't know. It's very like Hogwarts sorting house <laughs> hat effect I'm, over here. I'm glad they went full devil and like there's a huge mo- devil monster. In He's the going movie. fucking full devil. But it's sad because like uh, mm-hmm. Stan Winston's credited in this movie, and he actually built a practical devil creature they didn't use it. that they apparently filmed two days worth, and yeah. it, like it wasn't working. Like oh, it, it sucks. So something about it wasn't working, or the director wasn't happy with it, and they we, went the CG yeah. route. Yeah, it sucks because like yeah, that would have been. And so I was like, good. just like the relic. Remember, they made a cool monster, and then some. It it's, looks awesome. Yeah, and then some. And then it's CG, like, and it looks yeah, horrible. It's like, huh? But it was a cool looking monster. I think my biggest complaint about it wasn't, it was just so much that it was just one big brown blob. Yeah. Like, I would have maybe, like, made it look, maybe have contrasting colors or something. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, it's like probably you said, a rush job. Yeah, it's like you said, it's literally doesn't have any textures or anything on it. And it's <laughs> like literally just, if like a fucking burlap sack came to life. Um, but, um, yeah. So. Arnold starts ripping uh, her clothes off to, like, I guess, like, rape, have sex with her and rape her because he's, like, possessed Complete by Satan. Complete holy, unholy right. Um, and he keeps making the exact same sound every rip. I was like, oh, nice use of the body. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> um, so, they do have a part here, though, where, like, Arnold's trying to fight against Satan, but he's, like, never going to be able to, like, be unpossessed. And there's, like, nobody else around, and, like, it's it's getting close to, like, you know, midnight and all this stuff. The end of days. Yeah, and he's, like, essentially his whole goal is to just make it so that, like, she doesn't get, like, raped by, like, somebody um, that's possessed by Satan. And so he sees, like, this holy sword that's, like, fell down during the thing that was, like, in that church, and he just jumps on it. And I was like, dude! And that's when, it's like, pretty, Satan, pretty like, awesome. burns out of his body... Um, and I'm assuming he has to go back to hell because he got like exercise from him or something. I don't know. It seems like it, or like the time ran out. But I I have to give this movie props because fucking there's no like he's fine. It's like he's fucking dead. Like, oh yeah, he Arnold bails himself. Fucking dies in this fucking film, and I was like, I was shocked, but I was also like pleasantly shocked. I was like, please don't let this be for nothing. Don't let him get mm-hmm. up and be like, or like next day he's in the hospital. I'll be like. It is stunning because this is the only non-Terminator movie where Arnold has, dies. Right. In those movies, it's like, yeah, he's like he's a not machine. a human. Yeah. So, I was like, dude, was I can't awesome. believe that like he said yes to fucking getting killed. But I, not that I think that he has like a. It big makes the ego, movie so much better. Exactly. Yeah. It's a wonderful ending. Yeah. It's a wonderful life. <laughs> um, but he sees his daughter and wife as he lays like dying, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they do something like that in Gladiator, right? Where he's yeah. like, um, but it's like, like you said, he's a tortured soul in this film. So he's like, he sees his wife and daughter and it's just like, look at this photograph. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he doesn't say that. Um, but he dies and, uh, you, you presume that he's going to see them in heaven or whatever. Mm-hmm. So very cool. And the devil will have to wait till the year 2099. <laughs> nine, nine. <laughs> he's like, 
The devil have to wait to get his ass beat. Um, my only complaint: no freeze frame or outtakes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that would have been better. He's like, <laughs> dan, 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 dan. Yeah. <laughs> freeze frame. Dan, 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 dan. I was like, dan. great job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? Um, do you have any other notes about this? Nope. I think we covered it. Do you have any other nopes? <laughs> Okay, so I what have you... a father Kovac. Is that? Do you think he's like Kojak's dad? <laughs> or wait, why would he they change his last name? <laughs> anyway, um, so what do you give this film? I give it a nine point nine five. I mean, nice. Arnold movies are some of my favorite movies, and this one, like, mm-hmm. this is probably top five Arnold for me at this point. It's great. I, I think that like um, Arnold movies, if I won't say if anybody else, but if like. I feel like he's the only person, the only real reason to watch this film is, is like, not the only real reason, but, like, obviously the main drawing for this, like, was to see Arnold. Mm -hmm. And that's honestly the biggest reason for this film for me to, like, ever watch this film. Not to, like, discount the other actors, but it's it's cool to see Arnold not play, like, an invincible guy Mm -hmm. and, like, to actually get to act and, like, you know... Use his acting chops and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I completely, completely agree. It's a great film. Um, I, it's been a while since I've seen like a bunch of Arnold films. I mean, I know that like you know Terminator and all those other movies and stuff, but um, he's he's always like the best. If if he's the lead, he's always the best. And if he's like an ensemble, he's one of the best things in films because he's just it's like the charisma of Mm -hmm. him so um you have to give props to him for that um for sure yeah and i can't emphasize it enough like this movie looks so cool yeah um if you want to see it's a perfect example of like a great gothic horror movie Mm -hmm. like i think i'm a basic bitch sometimes when i watch movies because like sometimes i just stop following the plot and i'm just looking at it like this shot i'm stop watching (laughs) it looks so cool like i can't get over how cool it looks so great movie 9.95 nice Loved it. Oh, I guess I have to read it too. Fuck. I almost forgot. You have to. Yeah. That would have been a bad idea. The buddy <laughs> the buddy contract. Um yeah, I'm gonna give it like an eight point nine five. Nice. Um I would have given it a perfect, High price. but as much as I like the film, um I feel like the Satan role wasn't my favorite. Like I feel like it could have been done. Well now that you gave better. the idea of Lance Henriksen being in this yeah. movie, like holy crap. I think almost then it would every, have been a ten point. Every like movie could have been improved if in a role by like Lance Hendrickson or like yeah. Jeffrey Combs. That's what um, I told him when I met him. Or Robert Picardo. Mm, yeah. Not in the, I don't know if he could have been a good <laughs> devil in this film, but he I would He was have, scary as that werewolf and Dude, like, oh my god. I would have loved to have seen him at least in a role in this though. Maybe they could have Dr. Flock show up as the devil. He could have been Robin Tunney's character. Dude, Do- Dr. Flocks would have been a good devil because he's horrifying in that one episode, like the mirror episode, where he creates that, like, <laughs> eugenic fucking disaster. <laughs> I was like, Jesus! Um, All right, so what's next? Uh, Mike Weed. Here. So, I'm going to give you a couple clues here. Uh, this man has played the father to the Shagadelic spy, Austin Powers. <laughs> oh, dude. He rose as Batman's butler, Alfred. <laughs> he was a miser as Ebenezer Scrooge. So, next week, like his son Austin, he plays a spy. So, do you have any clue, any ideas on this? This came out in the 60s. Um, it's like the Ipcrest file? Yep. Dude! So, we're watching Holy both crap. the film, the Ipcrest file, and the weird watches. They actually came up with a show last year called the Ipcrest file. Wow. Um, came out. I don't, I've never seen this. You've never seen the Ipcrest file? Mm-hmm. Good. I'm really excited because I was looking through spy films and I heard this is like one of, it's on a list of like top 50 or top 100 British films of all time recently. They put it in there. Um, but yeah, Michael Caine plays like a spy. Cool. So very interested to see how this is. Um, nice and, pick. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Um, so I guess it'll be Ipris File Week. Um, hopefully the show isn't bad, but I guess we'll see. Um, <laughs> e. <laughs> Michael Caine's like, yeah, he plays Harry Palmer. Dude, this poster. Harry Palm. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> but true. It's like, dude. The most daring. Sex espionage, baby. Yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> like, who made that poster? <laughs> Fucking Ed Wood? It was Austin Powers. Unbelievable, himself. but true. <laughs> It's like, you won't believe this shit, but he's fucking with I can't him. believe you picked a sex Spionage film. <laughs> How does that work? I, this is going to be does he great. Have, like, a camera on his penis? <laughs> cool. All right. So, um, you know, thanks for watching, guys. Um, and uh, I guess, as always, remember that uh, Universal Soldier Day of Reckoning is just, like, a piece of crap. You son of a...